Good afternoon, good early evening for this Wednesday, July the 22nd, 2020. It is currently 4.56 p.m. Central Time. I'm sitting here in the back of the sanctuary of Victory Baptist Church. I got here super early for the Wednesday evening service. I've been on the I've been on the air live now for I don't know how many total hours uh, that I've been on the air live. I think uh, I think two two hours maybe so far. I was on the air live early this morning for almost an hour. So I think I've done three hours of live broadcasting already today, and here we are. It's almost 5 p.m. At 7 p.m., I go live on the air for the Wednesday evening service unless I change it up and just say, hey, I'm going live early and and you can tune in or listen at 7 when it's available on demand. I don't know how I'm going to work it, but we will see. I'm here at Victory Baptist Church and if you can hear that, that's my pencil hitting my Bible. I don't know what to say here. I, I, I feel like that anything I say here is going to be um, futile. It's going to be feel like it's vain. And I, I don't want it to feel like it's futile. I don't want to feel like it's vain. I want to feel like that, that something, something of great importance is about to happen. But I don't know how to communicate this in a way I, I think this is going to really reveal something about you and me. I think it's going to reveal something deeply, deeply flawed inside of us. And 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 I I don't know if we're all if we're gonna be willing to really face face the truth here. I don't know if we're gonna be really to face uh, really ready to face the truth. Let me explain where we've been. Then then you'll understand where we're where we're at, and then I'll try to figure out how to get us to where we need to go. All right. So where have we been? We're we're in the book of Proverbs. We have been looking at Proverbs chapter 2. If you look at Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, and verse 4, there are eight imperatives. These things that saying, hey, you need to do this. You must do these things. This, it, these are imperatives. These are commands. These are something you must do. And for you to really see the urgency in these imperatives for you to really understand why you must do them. I think you need to go back to the end of chapter one where we have wisdom. She's out there in the street. She's crying out. And then the next thing we know, we have uh, we have her. She's warning that the simple ones, how long are you simple ones going to love your simplicity? Your scorners, how long are you going to delight in your scorning? And you fools, how long are you going to hate knowledge? That's, those are some tough questions we have to ask ourselves. Hey, are we, are we the simple ones? Do we love simplicity? Do we delight in scorning? Are we fools who hate knowledge? And then she says to them, the turn at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit upon you. I will make known my words unto you. But then we have this serious warning in verse 24 uh, to verse 32, basically saying, hey, I've called, you refused. I've called out for you. You haven't turned at my reproof. You haven't listened. Well, guess what? When calamity, destruction, and everything comes upon you, I'm simply going to laugh. Well, this makes the imperatives of chapter two very important. We don't want to be in a situation where there's calamity, destruction, and then the wisdom of God is seen as laughing at us. But there's a little bit of hope here at verse 33. Whoso hearkeneth unto me, whoever will hearken unto God's wisdom. Remember, God's wisdom is being personified here as a woman. Um, if you will hearken unto her, unto God's wisdom, you will dwell safely and be quiet from the fear of evil. But you've got to hearken unto God's wisdom. Now, here's the imperatives. Here are the imperatives. You ready? Verse 2. Now, or chapter 2, verse 1. Now, here, wisdom is personified as a father, as a man. My son... Now, here we are. We're the children. Now, remember, we just, wisdom personified as a woman just gave us a serious warning with a little glimpse of hope. Chapter two, wisdom is personified as a man. And we're told this, my son, if you will receive my words, there's imperative number one, receive it. Number two, hide my commandments with thee. We have to hide them. Uh, number uh, Verse two, incline thine ear unto wisdom. Uh, next imperative, apply thy heart to understanding. Next imperative in verse 3, criest after knowledge. Next imperative, liftest up thy voice for understanding. Now, those are all the imperatives we've looked at so far. You've got to take the initiative 
and do these things in order to try to obtain this wisdom. You want this wisdom. You want to go after this wisdom. You want to listen to it. You want to have it. You want to hide it. You want to receive it. You want to get it. Do you truly desire it? Now, all of this leads us to the two imperatives that we have for this little devotional message, all right? And these imperatives, I'm struggling here because because I think these two imperatives, the emphasis is not on the imperative. The issue is on the desire that would lead you to carry out the imperative. Like, this is more about the desire. And I think this is where we're really, really confronted. Let's just look at it, all right? Proverbs chapter 2, verse 4. If thou seekest her, now the her is wisdom personified as a woman in chapter 1, all right? If you seekest her, all right, as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures. The two imperatives are seek and search. Seek and search. But the emphasis is, yes, you seek and search. We don't need to do a lot to figure out what those words mean, but we seek, we search. And what are we seeking and searching for? As silver and as for hid treasures. So before we even look at the imperatives, here's the question. When it comes to God's wisdom, when it comes to God's wisdom, do you perceive God's wisdom to be as valuable as silver and as valuable as a hid treasure? Do you see it as silver? Do you see it as a hid treasure? Now, you've got to be honest with yourself. This is not time to play the church game where you're like, well, amen. God's wisdom is silver and hid treasure. Oh, well, obviously it is. And you sound all sanctimonious and all religious and all very church-like and everyone oh, wonderful. And you can brag about how much that's you. But let's really get down to honesty. If I, if I came on the air right now, and I don't know where people are listening to me right now. Some may be in Ohio. Some may be in Tennessee. I don't know where you are. Some uh, in the United Kingdom. Some in the Bahamas. Wherever you may be. And I, and I said, look, I have information that in the state you are currently listening to me in or the country you're currently listening to me into the neighborhood you're listening to me at, wherever you currently may be listening to me, I have information that there is gold there is silver, there is treasure hidden, and I have the map and I have the directions. Now, either one, you would just say, you're absolutely out of your mind. I don't believe you. You're, gonna, you're just trying to prank me. Or two, you would believe me. And if you truly believe I knew where it was, we all know you would probably, you would probably take a detour, stop what you're doing, sacrifice the things you may want to do today or tonight, and go look for that treasure. And why would you look for it? Because you would, you want money. You want riches. You would want a million dollars. You would want $500,000. Even if the treasure was only a thousand, you would probably stop what you're doing. Even if it was $500, there's a good chance you would stop what you're doing. I am not stating that I'm any better than you because I would do the same thing. If someone call, contacted me right now on my iPad and said, hey, this is how you can have $5,000. I'm sorry, 5000 well, Five, yeah, for $5,000, i am not, not even, even going to pretend like, you know, I'd have to have, you know, pay off my house. Yeah, if you could pay off my house, I definitely would. But for even $5,000, I'd probably be like, you know what? I've done enough live recordings tonight. Church can be canceled tonight. I'm going to go get the $5,000. And you say, how dare you say that? Well, you may think you're better than me, but I think we're in the same ballpark. When it comes to physical money, we will do, uh, we will, we will pursue it. We will seek for it. We will search to get it. Because A, we need it, and B, a, a certain amount of money can make life a whole lot easier. If my house was paid off, you know how, how financially, man, my house was paid off, it would be wonderful. It would be great. It would be just, uh, woo, it'd be amazing, right? So if you have $100,000, go ahead and send it to me. I can pay off my house, all right? $100,000, all right? So, but that's not the purpose of this message. The purpose is we all have these things that we want, all these things we need that requires money, and we would search to get it. We would search for it. We would seek for it. We work to get it. All right, now, we understand money. We understand treasure. We understand that concept. 
because we live in that world. Now, when it comes to God's wisdom, when it comes to God's wisdom in any way, shape, or form, does this describe you? You seek for God's wisdom as silver. You search for God's wisdom as for hid treasure. Do you seek God's wisdom like you would silver and hid treasure? In other words, something of great financial value, something of monetary value, money. Like you, we understand silver, we understand treasure, we understand money. We know what we would do to get it. We know what we would sacrifice something. If someone called you and said, hey, Saturday, uh, if you do this for me, I'll give you $1,000. It'll be, it's amazing how fast you would change your Saturday plans to get $1,000. <laughs> my, my iPad just lit up. I'm like, oh, someone's, <laughs> someone's sending me a message right now. They're going to pay off my house payment. Okay, well, the end of this live broadcast, the end, I don't care. I'm going to go, get, I'm going to find out what they need me to do to pay off my house payment. Like, the, the, you see, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's a joke, but there's seriousness to that. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm any more godly than anybody else because I'm not. So when I read that, those imperatives, it's like, do they really, do they, do they really mean anything to us other than they're just right there in Proverbs 2 and we read them really quick and we move right on? Search, seek, seek, search. Now, if we do a little bit of work on the imperatives themselves, I don't know how much it's going to help us. All right, let me look here. Let me open this up. I'm, I'm going to the Blue Letter Bible app to uh, the interlinear for Proverbs 2.4. All right, if we go to seek, let's go for seekest. That's the way the King James says, seek, seekest. It's this Hebrew word. Strong's H 1245. Bakash. Bakash. Bakash, it means to seek, to secure. All right. If we look up Strong's definition, it's used 225 times. It's used to seek, require, request, seek out, inquired, besought, ask, sought. Begging has the idea of begging. That's interesting. Strong's definition, um, to search out by any method, specifically in worship or prayer. Now, that is interesting. Wow. Wow. Now, that's interesting. To search out by any method, specifically in worship or prayer, by implication to strive after, ask, beg, beseech, desire, inquire, get, make, inquisition, procure, request, require, seek for. I like that idea, specifically in worship or prayer. So do you truly seek after? Do you beg God for wisdom? For God's wisdom, do you uh, do you seek it as silver? Now, obviously, look, we plead with God for, for, for wisdom. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. We beg God for spiritual wisdom. But let me tell you, it doesn't just happen some arbitrarily way. I'm holding it right here in my hands. There, it's right here in the Bible. We've got to seek it out like we're seeking for for treasure, like we're seeking for for silver. We've got to work, beg, plead, work to get it. Do we really want God's wisdom? Now, the next word is there's seekest. Now the next is searchest, using the King James language. Seek, search. Let's go back. Let me go back to Proverbs 2, bring up the interlinear. Let's go to their seekest. Let's look for searchest. It is this word. Strong's age, 2664. Chafes. Chafes. All right. To search for, to search out. To search for, to search. Um, it means to seek. Uh, and basically, I mean, it, does, it can also mean to disguise or hide yourself. It can mean that, but it, it's used 23 times. Search, disguise, search out, change, diligent, hidden. So seek, search. The, the imperatives are basically just saying, it's saying the same way, two, it's saying the same thing two different ways. Saying the same thing two different ways. 
Go after it like it's silver. Go after it like it's hidden treasure. Now, so there, there's the text. There's nothing more I can really do with the text. Now, we can go all, we could go through Psalm 119. We could go through Psalm 19 over and over. The word of God, it, you know, we are to desire it more than gold, that, that we are to, more than gold and silver. We are to desire it more than the honey and the honeycomb. We are to, you know, God's word it should be our treasure. It should be our joy. It should be the thing we desire the most. It's our spiritual food. I mean, I've said all of these things a million times. Here's the question I want you to ponder. What is it in you? What is it in me that that causes us not to truly value and see God's word as this valuable treasure that we should seek with everything in us? Why do we see the Bible as kind of just, well, you know, it's there. Yeah, I'm supposed to read it. Yeah, I'm supposed to study it. I'll get to it. Maybe I will. I mean, look at the average amount of time the average Christian studies God's word. Look, like, there's 9 million statistics that prove this. If you look at how, how, uh, how on average churchgoers, how often they actually read the Bible, very less, I mean, very little. Rarely do, uh, mo- most Christians do not read it daily. Most Christians don't even read it weekly. Um, most Christians don't even read it monthly. I think the numbers are all really, really bad. So reading is not going very well. And then when you go from reading to actual in-depth study on a regular, consistent basis, I'm telling you, actual study almost never occurs. Well, if look, if you need, if you're trying to find uh, silver or treasure, you're going to have to do some digging. You're going to have to do because if you actually study, you had to write something down. Well, I don't do that. Well, then you don't study the Bible. So then you don't obviously value it as gold and silver. So what is it inside of us? not to truly value it as gold and silver. Look, I, this is an imperative I don't think we ever truly get to. Because it's what I this is what I've discovered in my Christian life. Typically the people who really want to search and study and dig in are usually the men, are young are young men who feel called to the ministry. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming pastors still seek and search, not just for sermons. I hope not, okay? But I'm going to assume pastors do so. But when it comes to the average lay person sitting in the pew, there's almost this attitude like, okay, yeah, it's God's word. Yes, I, I, I don't hate it. Yes, I'll read about it. Yes, I'll study it some. I may listen to a sermon here or there. But you don't see people with this mindset that uh, this is an imperative, I must seek, I must search. It is silver, it is gold, it is hidden treasure, it is my food. I have to have it. It's 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 not viewed that way, and I don't know what it's inside of us that either we don't believe we need God's wisdom, we think we're doing just fine, we perceive that we already have enough of it, we perceive that church is sufficient for it. I don't know. I don't know, but I think it's it's a very serious situation. And, and I want you to see that when you, here's the where this section leads us to. If we, pers- if we follow these eight imperatives, then look at verse five. Then, please note, then, then, once you've met, once you've pursued the eight imperatives, then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. According to Proverbs, you are not going to understand the fear of God and you're not going to find the knowledge of God if these eight imperatives are not true of your life. So let's, let's, some practical questions. Number one, here's practical question number one. What is it inside you and me that causes us not to see the wisdom of God, the word of God as this gold and treasure that we are pursuing and seeking and studying and going after with some kind of like intensity? What is it about us that just like, yeah, you know, yeah, the Bible. What is it? I, I, don't, I don't know the answer. Some people say worldliness. Some people say not spiritual. But I think, there, I think there's people who truly love God. They go to church. They're faithful. They're trying to live out their Christian life, but there's just something about them that they, that 
They're just content to just go to church and hear a sermon. They're not that that they're not motivated to do anything else. Like what is it? I, I think only I don't think only individuals can say what it is. I don't know. I think sometimes it's laziness. Oh, and I think it's sometimes we just don't truly see it as valuable as we claim that we do. That's number one. Number two. If Proverbs two is correct, and those eight imperatives are critical, and without these eight imperatives. Without these eight imperatives, you cannot understand the fear of God. And you cannot find the knowledge of God. Then let me ask you, do you truly understand the fear of the Lord? Do you truly have the knowledge of God? Then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Then, then, the eight imperatives are critical to get to the then. If you have the eight imperatives, imperatives, then you can understand the fear of the Lord and then you can find the knowledge of God. Do you truly possess the fear of God and do you truly understand the knowledge of God? Do you truly have the knowledge of God? This is something you have to ask yourself. Look, I would argue that we don't truly understand the fear of God. We don't truly have the knowledge of God because I think if we truly had the fear of God, the knowledge of God, we would look and act and talk and think so radically different. I think it's missing in your life and I think it's missing in mine. I'm going to go back to Proverbs 2. I'm going to read these five verses now together. Here we go. Listen carefully. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding. If, please note all these conditionals. If, 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 if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures. Then, if you do these things, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Do you understand the fear of God? And do you have the knowledge of God? Understand the fear and find the knowledge. You don't unless you do the eight imperatives. I don't know what else I can say. Share your thoughts. Let me know your struggles. Newsif at yahoo.com. Newsif at yahoo.com. Newsif at yahoo.com. All right. That concludes this devotional look at Proverbs chapter 2. We've concluded the eight imperatives. Now you can, uh, you can see what you think about that and struggle with it. And uh, let me know. Let's discuss it. Let's talk about it. All right. Thanks for listening. Everyone have a great evening. God bless.